Welcome back. We are back from our two-week holiday vacation with an amazing episode of BoobTube. And I cannot <laughs> forget to Casey Carter, Desirable Bottom. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm going to say that somebody probably needs to turn the microphone down. It's me. <laughs> Sounds that's a smart man right there. All right, right, right back at you. <laughs> Who dares talk now? <laughs> Anybody? Me <laughs> me. Gosh, I'm trying to set my mic up so it doesn't have like this this crazy feedback. I think you should but be okay. Remember right before the beginning of the show, Carrie, where you said, should I, should I really have headphones on? Me and Casey not having headphones is killing this. Oh, man. I can get mine. So you ladies, go ahead and talk about our topic. I will return in just a moment. Cover for it. Well, all right. Uh, and we're back from our holiday. Um, hey, Desiree. How was your holiday? Um, my holiday, it was good. I did gaming. I didn't do very much for Thanksgiving because we, uh, uh, we had uh, Thanksgiving in October. (laughs) Okay. Uh, (laughs) that's interesting because you're in Canada. So that's, is it Thanksgiving in Canada or is it something else? Thanksgiving's in October. Right. So is it called Thanksgiving in Canada? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. That's pretty cool. So we, have, we have the same thing as you guys. We have like turkey and stuffing and all the good stuff and all the fixings and it's so good and yummy. <laughs> then that means this past week you didn't really do anything in particular. You just kind of, it, it was just the weeks. Yeah, just chilled and worked and gamed and yeah, it was fun. Cool. All right. Well, um, so after Thanksgiving, or at least our American Thanksgiving here, we're doing dysfunctional families on TV and film. And um, it's funny because I, I wish I could say I had dysfunction in my family, but I don't. Compared, not at least not compared to the thing that the the families in the shows and the movies we found, but I don't know about you. You got some crazy uncle or auntie who drinks too much in your family? Yeah, a lot of people are mouthy in my family, so we always have something going on. (laughs) It's French. It's the French in all of us, so uh, people aren't... (laughs) People aren't... uh, (laughs) <laughs> They're not shy and they don't keep their tongues in their pockets. So if somebody has a, you know, one too many brewskis, they're going to speak They're going to put their tongue in their pocket. Us, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I saw a tongue in the pocket thing. That's... Yep. That, that, they do that in Canada. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just thinking, what does the pocket look like? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Before or after you put your tongue in it? I'm not going to go there. <laughs> oh, now she wants to hold her tongue. Oh, there but we I'm go. Tongue Wait tongue. a second. Here she, here she comes back in. Uh, let's see. Where'd you go here? All right. There we go. There we go. How are we looking? There we go. We're looking great. All right. Yeah. How are we sounding? How are we sounding? I will find my headphones. I don't know what happened to them. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I had to go borrow the the bass. I was like, hey, I need headphones or I'm not going to be able to do my show. And he was like, here you go. 
<laughs> oh, we got Dr. Chris Respect. We have uh, hey, Alex Miles. Yes, one of my Twitch folks. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Honey oh. Cat. One of your what folks? Twitch. Oh, okay. That, okay. I just wanted to make sure I got that right. That what did was, you think she said? I Jay? thought she said one of her bitch folks. And I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> Does, is that like what she calls her like team or her crew? Like, hey, bitches, you know, hey, bitches. No. Twitch, Twitch with a T. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, maybe she keeps their tongues in her pocket. Yes. <laughs> or wait, what is it? They're um, Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> Viet- oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. I, I, all I will say though is that Ted, our our designer and all around computer guy with everything that we do, he just made a very good point over text message. He said, "A dysfunctional start for a dysfunctional show." So yes. there you go. It just go. just to tie it back in. Nice nice addition, Ted. You didn't screw me up this time. Right, right. Yeah, nice addition. So dysfunctional families. I definitely. I don't know that mine's like dysfunctional as it's portrayed on tv dysfunctional but it definitely i am the black sheep of my family absolutely 1000 percent. so i um have some dysfunctional family members who act dysfunctional (laughs) (laughs) especially at family gatherings because you know and, and like she said like people you know like family members don't know how to keep their tongues in their pockets and really it's just Everyone feels like they're entitled to their opinion and they just say whatever the hell they think and don't take into consideration like other people's feelings. They just are like, oh, because I think it. And so, yeah, you know, I'm not the type of person that just sits there and takes it. So I'll be like, bitch. Bitch, keep your tongue in your pocket. (laughs) That'll be what you think It's somebody else's pocket. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) Keep it out of my pocket. (laughs) Right. Why are you worried about what's in my pocket? Exactly. Unless you put money in it, you don't, the three F's, if you don't feed me, finance me, or fuck me, you don't get no say so. Or tongue me. Bye. Or tongue. <laughs> I was going to say, because um, that's why we try to get folks' tongue out of the pockets. Yep. <laughs> that's actually why Dr. Crispect is here. <laughs> oh, yes. She's got his tongue in her pocket. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and, yeah. and yes, that on a doc, uh, Mr. Zilla. Oh my God! If you were, you were, what were you going to say, Doctor Zilla? Did he get uh-huh. an upgrade? Dr. Zilla. <laughs> nice, I saw it. At least it was her that fucked it up this time, and not me. Exactly. <laughs> well, don't not worry. yet. Don't, yeah, don't worry. You got time. <laughs> I will. I will. Especially in my new trailer. It, it, by the way, the pine walls look even better when you're just slimmed down to like, you know, the three way right, screen. Right. That's Cause, all you see. Because now it so really, it, I mean, just to give you an idea, she's in a lush pad. Look at this. She's got some, <laughs> she's got some extra diet per, pink cola over there in one side. And then you got your, extra? your fluffy cat in your, but you definitely uh, do have uh, the, the wood veneer. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll work on that. Is it, what is that? Is that like a pumpkin or? Oh, it's a cat. You're it's right. A cat. It's, a, it's a cat, and, cat. It's, and then the pink extra next to you. Oh yeah, my my soda pop. Yep. Well, that's exact. <laughs> that's exactly what you do. Oh do that again gosh. one more one more time. All right, ready? Hey, phrasing. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. I think our YouTube stream just got deleted. Oh, oh no! No, 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 I'm just, no! I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lawrence Glover. That's a new Oop. new name. I don't remember seeing. And Bella BBW. Hello, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. So, let's get started. Desiree, why don't you give us your first dysfunctional family TV show or movie pick of the week? I'm gonna Bambi. go with Knives Out. What was it? Knives was Out. Movie. Yeah. Knives Out. So the movie with um, Daniel Craig. Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Curtis. <laughs> Daniel Craig, Chris Evans. Yep. Um, I like the cast. Oh, Don Johnson was in it. True. But I yeah. didn't. I did not understand the movie at all. <laughs> you didn't get it. it? The knives movie. Out. They just they had knives out. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, then, then I mean, it I was, was a, it was a who done it, but it was also 
they had this Game of Thrones looking chair that was made of knives and all of that. And and in a metaphoric sense, they were also literally stabbing each other in the back with, well, I think they did it, you know? Right. So, yeah. But they kept saying that the, the, the caretaker did it. So I was like, it did, to me, it just the way that they put it together didn't make sense to me. Maybe because I have one of those like who done it intricate clue mentality, like brains that's like really trying to pick things apart. And they probably made it so basic. It was Mr. It Mustard was in the library with the candlestick. Right, right. I'm breaking it down. Like the candlestick is brass, gold, silver, platinum. <laughs> Like I made it way more complicated than it had to be. Then maybe you were I the like killer. Seeing... Maybe I was. Dun, dun, dun. And that's why that's why I'm hiding out in my secret trailer. Yep. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> in the globe. <laughs> bum bum bum. Oh, these things are awful. <laughs> I think my ears I gotta say that they were better than the first option, so so we're doing good. Keeping the yeah. train on the tracks. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just gonna keep playing with my ears, like, choo choo, <laughs> choo. Maybe I should get some headphones and put them on. Like, yeah, this is too much. But anyway, go ahead. Moving on. Dysfunctional. Hello, pumpkin goddess. So knives out. Definitely dysfunctional family. Everybody hated everybody. Typical. And they're all rich, you know. Money, 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 hungry. <laughs> yep. I wanted someone to push someone down the stairs. I'm not going to lie. When I see this, the staircases like that, I'm like, yo, those are stairs that you just want to be like, oops, oh my. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. So you are the killer. It's it's solved. <laughs> yeah. I told you that's why I'm in hiding in this trailer in the middle of somewhere on the globe. Are you up there with Dexter? Dexter, by any chance? Is he like with you? Uh, In Alaska? Come on now. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're going to have hot sex I on can, a medical table. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> right. Yes. God damn it, Dexter. Stop for <laughs> just a moment. Put down the saran we'll wrap. Clean. Look, we'll clean your knives later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next selection. Casey, give us your weekly dysfunctional family pick. Um, I'm going to start off with Black AF which is on Netflix. Um, and uh, it did not get as much hype as it should have, but Black AF is, uh, was a show created by Kenya Barris, is the guy who did Blackish, um, Mixedish, Girls Trip. He also sort of got his career kicked off by um, being a part of America's Next Top Model. But what's crazy about this show is it's literally about him and the success he's gained and like when you watch the show he literally curses at his kids he tells them how much he hates them he's always calling out his wife for being a horrible mom uh you know calling the, you know saying that the kids are ratchet until of course they do something amazing and then he takes full credit um it's just it's it's one of those things where I watched it and was like, oh my God, I can't believe they just said that out loud. Like, it was just that. It's the stuff you think in your head or you whisper off to the side. All of that was said literally out loud. And it was just great. Great, great, great show. Netflix. Black AF. I'll check it out. Yeah. Is it real, though? Like, is he really sharing his true memoirs? Okay, so... To certain extent, yes, because it's he is married to this to a woman who was I think she was an attorney. She and they've got six kids, and she stopped working to raise the kids. And he talks about what he does as a writer and and the shows and all of that. So it's the only thing I questioned was whether or not he legit swears at his kids and calls them stupid and all kinds of crazy names. But he's he's portraying himself in the show. Hmm. That's interesting. And that is dysfunctional for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Because let me tell you, in my house, if I had cursed at my mom, eh, 
I'd not be sitting here right now. I did be no me. And did be around. Right. right. I'm 45. And if I cursed at my mom, my mom has a backhand that I think she has a springboard in her elbow. Okay. And like, I'm telling you, she would just be like, and, and she was like a ninja. You wouldn't even know she was anywhere close and you would say something slick out your mouth, she would just appear from nowhere like this, boom, smack you and be like gone before you even realize what hit you. Damn. Yeah. 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 My mom was stealthy. I told her she always needed to be an FBI agent because she had that like whole stealthy, you know, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like where did you even come from i remember one time she smacked the shit out of me and it stung but i was so shocked at like where did you come from that i wasn't even worried about the pain i was literally like where did you come from like yeah and she was using like, the big spoon have... on the wall axel said oh i remember that i remember i used to get whoopings <laughs> oh god I split one. I remember um, I was <laughs> I was at my aunt's house and I called her a bitch under <laughs> my breath, of course. I didn't say it like out loud. I was like maybe 13 or 12. And I said it under my breath. And I, again, stealthy moments. And I'm like, how did you even hear that? And she came and she had one of those wooden spoons, but it wasn't the light one. It was the dark brown one, like the ones that go with the salad. Mm-hmm. And she... She smacked me a few times, and the last one, the whole, like, it literally just split right down the middle, and she was pissed. Now, <laughs> she's mad because I called her a bitch under my, under my tongue, under my breath, and then because I broke her favorite wooden spoon, and I'm like, well, no one told you to hit me with it. Like, yeah. Dysfunction. Those are some good old days. We had some people, like, flip tables one time at one of our events. It wasn't good. <laughs> What? Too many Flip drinks. Table. Too many drinks. Yeah, too many drinks. People got pissed, and it was just like. I want to go to Desiree's. Like, I want to go to Desiree's family parties. Right. Well, I want to go to Casey's first, so we can, you know, <laughs> go to the pool and do the whole like, you know, soiree thing. Smoke and some then, cigars. You know, or maybe Smoke we'll go to cigars. Desiree's. Yeah, we'll go to Desiree's first and we'll like laugh and watch everybody act a fool. And then we'll go to Casey's to just unwind and have yeah. drinks after we <laughs> See, I feel like it's got to be the other way. Like you got to like, you go to Casey's to relax and like start to get, you know, get your swerve on. And then when you get good and like riled up, then you go over to Desiree's and you just let fly. <laughs> and then you're like, and then you're like, Let's get ready to rumble. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're ready. Yes. Weighing in at 247 pounds, Uncle David. <laughs> yes. And in this corner, with her Twitch remote, Desiree. <laughs> the <Let's go>. Bottom. <laughs> Oh my I'm god! Not- and then you got, and then you have to give them the microphones or the walkie-talkies, and then they have to do their whole like you know speech. And, and <laughs> I'm telling you, I wanted to do a fan club or a site where like people that are beefing on social media, and they could come in, and I would dress up in my re- referee costume, and it would be just like this, one on each side, and me in the middle of my yeah. referee costume, and I'd be like, "All right, babe, number one, state Go. your case." It's like Twitter Go. roast battle. Yes. Yeah. Like, what's your beef with her? Tell us. And then, you know, blah, blah, blah. She did this. She she stole my boyfriend. And then I'll be like, all right, time's up. All right. Jury, take that information and we'll deliberate after babe number two goes. All right, babe number two, state your case. Blah, 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 that bitch. Da, 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 she said this. She said that. And I'll be like, oh, time's up. <laughs> That's it. All right, jury, let's deliberate. And then, you know, bring them on in and they'd be like, well, you know, like they do on the um, judge shows. When would they go a, back, when, would you have a jury or would you just be the ultimate say? I'll, I'll be the ultimate say, yeah. but the jury would be there to like commentate because you know everybody has like a different perspective, and I would want somebody that's like really funny, and then somebody that's really cynical, and then you know what I mean, like have a little bit of different personalities there just to make it fun and exciting, and then at the end I'd be like, yeah, I need to cut this shit out, like, but you win, <laughs> you or you win, which I don't know if that would make it worse or better, but yeah. They make up and then they do a porno. Yes. 
This, listen, this is what I say to everyone all the time. Listen, live like, brainstorming if, right here. Right. If it doesn't make money, then why waste any time or energy on it? Like, for real. Agreed. All that time you waste on that social media bullshit is for what? You could be making porno. You could be making porno. I'm going to be. So that brings me to a story. There is a <laughs> performer named Danny Black who. <laughs> Yes, Jeopardy Porno. <laughs> what movie did I do with Danny Black that was as a result of our beef? So we ran into each to, 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 It was actually his beef, but go ahead. Yeah, big. Not as. I'm gonna keep that to myself. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but. but, but, but. But uh, I ran into the AVN and then we did a video together and it was like that pent up aggression of like, you were talking shit about me. And then he was like, but you did this. And I was like, fine, let's just fuck, film it and get it over with. And now we're like the best of friends. So, hey, okay. hey. See, squash the beef, made the porno. There you go. Right. Made money. Squash the beef, then squash the beef. <laughs> Eat the beef. Eat, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, <laughs> so let's. I'm going to go ahead and give my pick this week. I'm going to go with Shameless. Um, that is my comedic view or my comedic pick. Um, Shameless to me is like the epitome of dysfunctional families because you've got Frank the dad who is constantly with his scamming, scheming, stealing, using the kids for every little monetary come up. You know, he's married, pretended to have kids with someone. Um, yeah. Yeah. That that show right there, and I like that they're that all the kids have like you have one that's homosexual, you have one that had a, a kid at a, as a teen, you have one that's been to jail, um, went to military school. Like you have uh, you know all these different, and then you've got um, Lip who's like Jeez. trying to be a good guy, right? Trying to be a good guy, and he just gets suckered into all this dumb shit, which is like real life. You, you know what I love about that show and Carrie, you hit on it is that it's it's this like dysfunctional, like, you know, poverty level family in the south side of Chicago. And you would you would automatically assume that they were very narrow minded and just like, you know, just kind of for lack of a better term, like trashy, you know, and, and at the end of the day. They don't give a shit that anybody's gay. They don't care that somebody's a drug addict. They don't care that somebody's a drunk. They don't care that somebody is a genius or went on to do things. Like they just, they're the most accepting group of. Right. You know, like, of, the of fam- like the multicultural kid that we don't know who the, like, who is he? Yeah. He's like <laughs> Monica and, <laughs> and, and Frank's kid. And he's black, obviously. And Monica is white. And so is Frank. So like, where did he come from? You know? Yeah. Right. And not to mention, right. I forget what the girl's name is. Um, Which shit, one? Is, the redhead? Uh, the, no, the, uh, the, Fiona. The, the Fiona. 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 I love her. I, like, Me too. I just like she is. She's like you know, dirty and crazy and you know, like sweaty and gross three quarters of the time. And then that other quarter, like all of a sudden, she walks out like done up or you know whatever, and you're just right. Like, Oh, damn. Like, yeah, the, the chick is a dime. It's like the perfect example of like, you can be trashy, but trashy people, like, it, you, when you call someone trashy, you can clean that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're ugly, that's just destiny for life. You'll like, always, you'll always, be, you can always get better looking, but you'll always be stupid. Right. It's like yeah. when people are like, oh, you're fat. And it's like, well, you know, I, I can lose weight or have plastic weight. surgery right. or weight loss surgery. But, buddy, you are stuck being an asshole the rest of your life. Like, this is a lifelong sentence for you. Amen. There's cures for me. But, yeah, I love Shameless. Um, and I I was sad when they took Fiona off. Um, I do know that it was, you know, an actress choice. I, I believe she wanted to move on to other projects. And it just, you know, end of the road for her. But I... I Still watch it. It's still a good show. They did, oh, they did a great job without her. I mean, I was kind of like, hey, I don't know how this is going to work or whatever. Right. But, you know, yeah, no, it's a great show. Yeah. So, yay for Shameless. All right, Desirable. This Desiree I'm gonna, Bottom. I'm going to go with Bad Moms. That is a good pick. Even though I, I didn't think they were Bad Moms. Was, 
functional, but it was so great. They didn't care. Yeah, I I think they're even more dysfunctional in um, Bad Mom's Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the second one. Yeah. Is it the second one? Yeah. 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 Even yeah, more dysfunctional. One. Who was in that movie? Mil- Mila. Kunick. Jo- Kunick. Mila yeah, Kunick. Catherine Hahn, Kristen uh, Bell, Christina Applegate. Oh. Love okay. That. Oh, I love Christina Applegate. Yeah, oh, she yeah. plays the snobby bitch, but the um. Kristen Bell, she's married to that Dap guy. Dax Dax Shepard. Dax Shepard, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like Kristen Bell, but the other one that I like is the one that plays like the hillbilly, like uh, her mom is Susan Sarandon, but she's like a comedian. And she does a commercial for, um... damn it. She has these commercials that she does. It's like, I think it's insurance or something, but she's in a minivan. You know what I'm talking about? Anyways. I yeah, think so. she's funny. Yeah, she's funny. Yeah, great so, yeah. all around. Made me laugh, laughed my ass off. I yeah. watched well, it the- over and over again. Yeah, the movie definitely depicts, um, you know, because one of the things as women, our relationship with our mother is is like probably the most important. They think it's our relationship with our fathers, but it's really our mothers because, you know, mother teaches you to be a woman. And each of them have these issues with their mothers that are so different. Cause you've got Mila Kunich who her mother's character is overbearing, always wants to be in control, you know, cause like she did the whole Christmas decorations and kept wanting to like make everything, you know, about her and her lifestyle, so to speak. And then you had the, I can't remember the actress's name, but the comedian and her mom was Susan Sarandon who kept abandoning her. And then the other one was Kristen Bell, and her mom wanted to be up her ass. Ended up buying the house next door, got the matching sweaters, and was like, you know, twinning. So yeah, all different issues, but issues nonetheless dysfunctional. (laughs) I love that we can hear the sound. It changes everything. Oh, good for you. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh yes okay. so good selection bad moms Casey okay um, I'm gonna go with mommy dearest yes mommy dearest Faye Dunaway and of course the famous no wire hangers um yeah if you recall, she beat the crap Do out I? of her. Yeah, <laughs> beat the crap out of her adopted daughter for you. I don't even know how the kid was, but anyway. But yeah, that, I mean that's the. I think what makes that one so unique is the fact that it's about a real person, right? And, you know, and and a real famous person, a real famous person, and and the daughter wrote this story. And it's it's almost funny because it's like when you watch the movie, if you don't know that first, it's almost hard to believe that someone who was that famous, that well-known could be also that cruel. And, and at the same time, like adopt these kids because you want the kids and yet be as cruel as you were um, to the kids. And, and I found it fascinating that she thought because of that's how she grew up and turned out so well that I'll just raise my kids that way. And it just really, I mean, sometimes it's even hard to watch because it's like, I, you, you, cause there's this moment where she, um, you know, uh, Crawford, where she's in competition with a young girl for the affections of the dude she technically already had, but she didn't like the idea that they had such a great relationship but it's like, that's what you would want, you know? So right. it just, you know, it, there's something that wasn't quite right in her head. Well, she didn't adopt the kids because she wanted them. She adopted them because it was kind of like a status quo type thing. Like, you know what I mean? Because she was putting on this image because she was an actress. And so she, right. well, you know. She, also, she couldn't seem to get herself married, which is where she would have been able to, you know. Right. Have, actually have so, them right so so the next best thing is to 
adopt some kids. So right. I mean, I don't, it, it just I don't know. I, like I said, it's it, it, it's when you think about it, it's it's kind of sad that you would get these kids and then treat them so horribly. Right. And they could have went to a better home. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Can I ask who's calling? Oh, <laughs> talking about my phone. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take this. <laughs> I'm being punished. So I will yeah. say I didn't own a plat I didn't own a wire hanger until a couple of years ago. I literally have had plastic hangers because of that movie. I was yeah, like, well, if I don't own any wire hangers, you can't beat me with one. Right. See, and that's the thing is, you know, when you dry clean a lot, that's what they send your stuff home with, you know? And I remember when I was old enough to take my own clothes to the dry cleaners, I would literally bring the clothes home and rip them off the hanger and, and keep them in the plastic. But I put them <laughs> on a regular, you know, on, on a plastic hanger or whatever. Yes. Just, mm -hmm. I don't know. In, in the back of my mind, it just, you know, no wire hangers. That is an epic scene, though. That that scene where she's like, "No more wire hangers." <laughs> yeah, that's some it's that's epic. Some crazy. That's here's the thing. That it's like that's some crazy black mom thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like because you know black moms are gonna beat you with the shoe. They are gonna you know with a belt. First with a they switch. can find. Carrie, there could it you is. That, could you do that there impersonation again? Uh oh. No more wire hangers. I love it. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! That's the screen. Oh my god! I'm glad it wasn't me this time. I know. Oh, Is that gonna be a sound bite? Anyway. Oh my wow. God. Well, if things couldn't get any worse, if your family couldn't get any more dysfunctional, how about flowers in the attic? I actually don't know that one. Flowers in I, the attic. Go ahead. I think I, I, it's a book, right? And then it got turned into yeah, a movie. Yeah, it's a part of a theory. I, I, I believe I had to read the book when I was a kid, like in school or something, but I don't, I tell me what it is. Okay, so... The book is about a sister and a brother who fall in love and have kids together. And she, the, the brother who was her husband Never mind, died. I think it was Flowers for Algernon. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I can't imagine they would have had you read this book. But he gets killed, he gets killed in a car accident. Like their life is great. And then all of a sudden he gets killed in a car accident and she's left with nothing. There was no will, there was nothing. So she has to go slithering back to her parents who are gazillion rich. They have this huge castle mansion in the middle of nowhere with these like, you know, this huge property, right? Estate. Okay. And she gets there and like they, she's trying to win back her father's love and like make him approve of her again because, you know, obviously she's, destitute and broke and the mother is like you guys can stay here and you can stay in the main part of the house but those bastard children have to stay in the attic so the cycle repeats itself and then there's two sets of twins there's a boy and a girl and a boy and a girl um and the teenagers end up starting to get curious and you know they're stuck in this attic for years and so you know flowers in the attic so dysfunctional you know Having that took dysfunctional to a whole different level. Yeah, very much so. That's why I said, you know, if wire, ha I, I'll take wire hangers any day. That's Agreed. something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, when I was thinking of dysfunctional families, flowers in the attic always comes to mind because it's like, wow, who thinks of this shit? Like that's some deep. Whoa. Maybe that's some like, Arkansas whoa. shit. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What was that song? I'm my own grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right there. Yeah. 
Well, if you want to stop a conversation, you know, tell the story about fl flowers in the attic. Hmm. There you go. What Move the on. hell was that? Yeah, go ahead, Desiree. <laughs> I'm going to go with Silver Lining Playbook with Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Joey from New Kids on the Block is in. No, that's not that same movie. Never mind. Robert De Niro and Jack Weaver. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, another... of Trailer Park Hot, Jennifer Lawrence. She's like. She, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's in all, I have. That's all way, I have to like, add to this conversation. I don't even think. Go ahead. <laughs> I said that's all I have to add to this conversation. I don't she, even know why I think she's hot, though. She's like, you know, like, well, they, they had all those, like, the nude photos and stuff leak, like, years ago with her. And, like, she's in, you know, like, a pretty, like, you know, certainly not, like, a you know, a Beverly Hills mansion or anything. And, but she's just, she's hot and she looks a little, you know, trailer parky. I don't know. I like her. Trailer parky? Yeah. Is that our new word? Add yeah. it to our dictionary? Is All right, y'all. I E or trailer parky? Like e -E I'm gonna go with a Y. Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. I'm okay. Why with that. why trailer parky? But go ahead. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and Bradley Cooper, he's so dreamy. <laughs> Smash. He is smashable. <laughs> he, he is smasheroo. Oh my god, Jay. <laughs> he's well, smash. smash. Smash Jay. He's going to smash Bradley. Oh, my God. I think he lives around <laughs> oh Philadelphia. Oh, I've got a splitter. <laughs> we got a bleeder. Oh, my <laughs> God. Stop. <laughs> but the the movie is interesting because, okay, so Bradley Cooper, I don't remember, like, the full background of the story, but he was, like, in the nut house, wasn't he? Yeah, it says he was in a mental institution. He wanted to move back in with his parents to reconcile with his ex-wife. Things get more challenging uh, when a mystery girl pops in with problems of her own. So Right, yeah, which is Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. yeah. Pretty exciting. And actually, I believe she was trying to help him get the, the ex or the wife back. But the wife had already moved on. And then they end up, you know. And in the process, they fell in love. Oh, that's every story. Yeah. Damn it. Wish I had Damn a barf it. sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's it. Oh. Yeah. Maybe I'll upgrade right, next Casey. week. Next week I'll have barfs. Yes. Come on. Let's upgrade the package. Pay another dollar. Get some more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Casey, give us your pick. All right, so um, I'm just going to throw out two. One, because I have to. The other one's going to be my actual pick. And so the one I okay. have to is Things We Lost in a Fire, which is my Holly Berry moment of the night. Well done. Uh, Holly Berry. <laughs> um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So my actual pick is Shit's Creek on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Oh. Netflix, right? Oh. I yes. love, love Shit's Creek. Absolutely. Talk about just oddly dysfunctional. Did you guys this find that show like while it was still, oh, I guess it was a, on Canadian broadcast, right? Like that was where it yeah. started. So I didn't find it until they'd finished and I just saw it like on Netflix and, and ripped through the whole thing. Fucking loved it. Such a great show. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, very well written. The character, the depth of the characters, you know, considering it's a comedy, the depth of the characters is really fascinating to me because the daughter is super shallow, and yet there are these moments where you kind of really dig her and feel for her. And the son in his flamboyancy, you know, you're kind of like, he's annoying. And then at the same time, again, you go back to this, oh, I still love him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, and it's funny for me to see Eugene Levy be yes. straight one. Like, he's not really not funny, but in this little 
group, he's kind of like in the in terms of their family, he's the straight one in the group. His, you know? his and, son is the meat and potatoes of that show. I mean, he, he you know, I mean, he's the producer. He wrote, he, you know, wrote writer like, but that dude has a long, super bright future because he really, he really, oh, really so does. good. I mean, because it's just, like I said, his character, the depth of his character is absolutely amazing to me. And, yeah. uh, Love the show. Love, 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 love that show. And so, yeah. I was yeah, so shit. sad when I, when it, like, all of a sudden I'm watching on Netflix and I've been binging for, like, two days. And then all of a sudden it's, like, the next preview for a different show. And I'm, like, wait a second. Right. What the fuck just happened? Like, it's over with. No! Not Not only is it crazy to have a, have a comedy do that, but to have a 22-minute comedy do that. You know, I mean, that is a straight-up 30-minute show. Like, yeah. take out commercials, like... That it's it's almost like an old school show in a new school kind of you know theme. Yeah, it's ah the brilliance and and it deserved every single award Agreed. that it got because it is really really brilliant, superly entertaining, amazingly written, and just phenomenally cast. It is just yeah, Shit's Creek. If you haven't Watch seen it. it. Yep. Watch it. Yep. I'm going to. I just put it in my my list right now on Netflix. Oh yeah, you will absolutely love it. I mean, especially because they stay in a motel that looks a lot like your your, your shop. Right? Yep. <laughs> oh, they're my neighbors. Ma, meet love. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Ah. Yeah. So there you go. Shit's Creek. Netflix. Watch it. There we go. Oh, my. Y'all ready for my next pick? Go yeah. for it. Eve's Bayou. Mm. Eve's yeah. Bayou is um, Jesse Smollett's little sister or bigger sister or sister. We'll just say sister. And she plays the younger sister in the, sh in the movie. And she's being raped and molested by the dad Ooh. and yeah it's the mom's not you know listening to her no one believes her except for i think the sister does and she ends up doesn't she end up running away and that's kind of how like the whole body thing was the, i thought the older sister was the one who was being maybe it was the yeah. older sister yeah yeah i knew that there was two sisters was older. but i yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I loved it because I can't think of her name, but she played in a thin line between Love and Hate plays the mom. Yes, yes. Um, does it, does it, anybody cannot... notice here that like we're like, oh, Shameless or like Shit's Creek and then Carrie comes up with the double header of incest? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, this is this funny dysfunctional family. Like, oh, gee. Carrie's like, you know what? One more word. Bill Cosby. <laughs> Lynn Whitfield. Thank you. Axel. Lynn Whitfield. Yeah. Bill Cosby was not dysfunctional. Not on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Case in point. Point taken. Yeah, you win that one. I can't even argue that one. Who knew? All these years. Can't wait to find out what other fucked up choices that Carrie's got. What other weird movies there are out there? Actually, my last pick is kind of weird too. So yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anymore. To be honest with you, like I'm just gonna leave it right there and uh, leave it alone because apparently I just went for dysfunctional. I didn't think about like oh you how went heavy deep for were. dysfunctional, like deep dysfunctional. Like I mean, what was that? What was the move? Oh yeah, you don't go full dis dysfunction. Like you gotta just you know scale it back just a little bit. Once once you get to like. Children having sex with each other and babies and, you know, like related and dad raping. Like, yeah, we're, we're moving on. <laughs> That's just Vivid Radio would never let this on air, but Exotica TV apparently is okay with it. Well, next time I should get a warning. <laughs> Keep it light. Don't I have, thought they were good. No, you can go as, you can go as deep as you want to. I'm, I'm with you, girlfriend. Okay. I'm white knuckling you, it over here. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay, well, moving on. Moving on. Desert. Okay, I'm going to Make it funny. Make it funny. A little bit with our idiot brother, with Paul Rudd. See, and, there you go. Uh, Perfect so example. He's, he's like the only uh, brother, I guess. And he's got three sisters and he like barges in their lives or something. So she said or something. <laughs> Oh my God! Welcome back, everybody. I miss, I missed you guys so much. It's, <laughs> you. it's it's almost like the two weeks like might have just uh, the whole train might have fallen off the tracks. Oh, yeah, I think man. so. I think <laughs> this show is just as this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as the topic. Yeah. See, what a and this, name. This, this this is us trying to find our groove, trying to get back into that. Nachos, lemon heads, my dad's boat. You won't go down cause my dick can float. We sail around the world and go court to board. Every time I come, I produce a quad. Put on your life best lens, jump anchor. There's a nice lady who I like to swank her. That was, let me, okay. When we could have songs with ringtones, like when they first started coming out, that was like my ringtone. And I was at work one day on a call and my phone goes off and it was like, boats and hoes, boats and hoes. <laughs> wow. I, was, I love that. That's like my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, I, well, I, anyway. I, I mean, which leads you into Step Brothers is another dysfunctional like that. That was why I grabbed that, but I just decided I had to play boats and hoes just to break it up a little there bit. There you go, you know? gotta get it in. Yeah, Step Brothers is like the epic, the epic, like dysfunctional. Hey, man. Do you touch my drum set? Nope. Cause it's just weird because seems like someone definitely touched my drum set. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That would have been the best scene to do, like, when we were going to do the whole, like, lip thing. Or, like, this, the, yeah. That's what we should do is the lip syncing. Oh, boy. Instead of trying to read the lines. Well, see, now, out, we now you thinking. can actually see the screen. So we actually could do it. Yeah, I think we should do that. Ah. <gasps> lip Next. sync battle. There you go. Ooh. We can do Who that, too. Who read their line better? I like this. We're getting back. This is this is this is more of like just like a a staff meeting more than like say an episode. (laughs) You guys get to watch us live as we. You want to see us make the soup? This is how you make the soup. (laughs) What's the matter? Is the soup too hot? Taste the soup. Where's the spoon? (laughs) (laughs) This is because we've missed each other. Okay. We need each other in our lives. My love. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Casey. Give us give us uh, your next uh genius um, pick. Um I'm I'm gonna go with uh, um <laughs> I'm gonna go with the rest of the development. Oh Wait. yes. Jason Bateman, Portia de Rossi, Will Arnett, Jeffrey Tambor, Michael Sarah. Um, I I I actually didn't start watching them until I got Netflix, and then I started watching Arrested Development. And I sometimes get to the end of an episode, and I'm like, what just happened? Like I I'm just so like what are, I don't under, like I don't know, Family. but. I'm also a huge Jason Bateman fan. I'm like totally. I'm with you. Smash. Yeah, man. He's I, actually really fucking smart. And he directs a lot of shit and writes a lot of shit that we don't even realize. Yeah. That I, that that show was so unique. I mean, it just, there was nothing like it before. And there's been nothing like it since. Like, it was just such a weird like quirky, strange, yeah. like, you know, just everything about it was like, 
and the detail in that show. I don't like I'm on Reddit a lot and there's an entire like subreddit, you know, devoted to <laughs> de- devoted to arrested development and they point out like the details in those episodes. It's crazy. Like really? you know, they have like you know, the the mom when she was in prison at one point, like her number is like the same number of like how many people they had doing. It was just like, there's so many like weird, it, it's almost like they, they just wrote so many inside jokes into it that it just comes through as like this. I mean, you find new stuff every time you watch the show. Yeah, I, I just, it was just really, I, you know, it's, I have to admit, it was one of those things where, you know, you're kind of like, what, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I can't, I can't remember the daughter's name. Uh, uh, Lindsay, no, Lindsay. Uh, it was. Portia de Rossi's character. No, not that. No. Oh, the, oh may, maybe the, 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 maybe yes. the, the, the cousin. She was like the cousin or whatever. Yeah. And I, and I, every time like they said her name, I'm thinking, you guys did not love this child. Yeah. Why is her yeah. name maybe dude when she pr- when she plays like she pretends to be an old lady and lives oh. in like she looked oh like an old lady like she was she it was perfect it was perfect i mean yep. she carried physically carried herself that way she talked like them oh my god and what was what was actually a little bit sad all the things she did to be noticed by her parents yep. and they, no matter what it was. They, and, by, they, and at times was the most successful of all of them. I mean, she was like running a major movie studio, like at and one had point. graduated from high school, yeah. right? Yep. <laughs> Crazy, but yeah, great, great show. show. Yep. But he also came up with Ozark, which I found to be brilliantly written brilliantly directed and brilliantly cast and so, let us not forget was- teen wolf too okay so <laughs> seriously let us, forget. Let us <clears throat> no forget. no we will never forget teen wolf too he was a boxer because ah. the basketball storyline was already done so they moved on to boxing oh no fantastic <laughs> That's Anyway. Awesome. But without further ado, we have to re- reveal the results from our Twitter poll where we used uh, or we put in um, Step Brothers, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, um, Flowers in the Attic, and what was the other one? Can you put it up for us, Jay? Step Brothers. Step, no, I thought national, it was national, national, Lampoon. national Lampoons. Oh, yeah, shame. Yes, so National Lampoons Christmas Vacation was our winner at 43%. I dedicate uh, this house to the Griswold family Christmas. Aww. Yes, yes, which is definitely a um, dysfunctional family and a whole series of movies around their dysfunction, but. Yeah, I remember the Christmas one with the lights blowing up and didn't he like set an animal on fire, like electrocuted an animal or something? The squirrel was in the tree. The squirrel, yeah. I want to look him straight in the eye. I don't want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four-flushing, low-life, snake-licking, dirt-eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood... Sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the title? <laughs> oh. You hey. know what? I would like to know if he did that without it being scripted, because that sounded improv. <laughs> no, there's no way. I mean, that was like. By the way, I, I just watched a documentary on uh, Saturn, or on uh, Saturday Night Live and Jim uh, Belushi, John Belushi, and he, you know, da- apparently, um, what's his name, Chevy Chase, was like the first year of Saturday Night Live was the star. He was like, "I'm Chevy Chase, and you're not," you know, that whole thing, yeah. and like he blew up. And left Saturday Night Live after one year to go on and, of course, you know, make these movies and a bunch of other movies. The one thing I will say is apparently he's a fucking asshole. Like he is, he supposedly Chevy Chase is like the biggest asshole on the face of the planet. Like 
Captain Asshole. That's mm. what I was hearing too. Shitters and full. You <laughs> got the Belushi thing on um, Showtime? Yeah. Was- yeah. Okay. I gotta check that out. Really good and really interesting, like to the insight to like what it was. And he, dude, he died at 33 years old. Like, and he looked yeah. like he was like 50. Like, I mean, it was, yeah. it was crazy. Life had cheered him up for real. Oh, man. It was, yeah, really sad. And even crazier now, you look at him and you're like, your brother who is still alive looks exactly like what he did back then. And they weren't that far off in age, you know? So mm-hmm. yeah, very crazy. Wow. I just said he did in Providence. He was uh, a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a funny dude, man. Caddyshack, like all the national lampoons, Christmas or uh, vacation movies. Like he is, always Happy. hilarious um mm-hmm. just unfortunately not a nice guy a big dick with a He's little a, penis a b- <laughs> <laughs> walk, 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 walk. i did it perfectly <laughs> yay. yay oh my gosh that's hilarious well Oh my gosh, our hour is gone. It's we because we burned the first five minutes with technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> that and dysfunctional, like real dysfunctional. Like, yeah, yeah we're not even going to talk about it. So dysfunctional, but it has been a joy. We are so happy to be back. And I want to say personally, thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. For those that didn't tune in live, those that rewatched this episode, make sure you check us out every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And ladies, Miss Desirable Bottom, lead in with your social. You, you can check me out on Twitter at Desirable Bottom, Instagram.com slash Desirable Bottom, underscore OnlyFans.com slash Desirable Bottom, and my official website, DesirableBottom.com. And check me out on Twitch, DesirableBottom.tv. Woo-woo. Woo-hoo. Back to you, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I am on Twitter at Reed Casey Carter, Instagram as the Casey Carter Experience, OnlyFans as Experience Casey, and you can find me on my website, Casey-Carter.com. Carrie. And woo, thank you. And I I'm Carrie Anthony, a.k.a. Platinum Pussy. You can find me on Twitter, Platinum Pussy, and the number one, also the same on Instagram. And you can always find me on my official website, queenofbbw.com. And don't forget, you can always find me here every hump day, Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my lovely co-host and Jay on BoomTube. So check out exotica.tv. And don't forget, 20% off at mrzilla.com. Com. M-I-S-T-E-R, MrZilla.com. 20% use code, Casey. Huh? Boob tube. What's the code? Boob tube. Oh. She was busy showing it. She wasn't, yeah, she wasn't saying Oh, it. she's showing us the boob tube. Oh, oh, okay. She took oh. that literal. Um, <laughs> use, hash, or use code boob tube at MrZilla.com to get 20% off of any merchandise that you purchase. Buy it for someone for Christmas. They'll love it. And that is all for tonight. We will see you next week. Same time, same bat channel. Back to you, Jay. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. Oh. Oh.